Hey, what's going on, everyone? Today I'm going to be talking about and showcasing a project that I've been working on for the past few months involving efficiency and RC planes. As some of you may know, I've done a year-long school project this past year involving uh, RC planes and efficiency, and it's become something that I've been very interested in. So in the background here, I'm going to be showing some beta phases of this project and some stuff I've done to lead up to the point that it is now. The airframe that I'm using for this plane is actually RC Test Flight's uh, Delta Fighter plane, and originally I had a like 3000 kV uh, Blue Wonder, like 300 class motor on there, and that was drawing a ton of amps, so it would only get on a two cell, like 1600 milliamp hour, it would get maybe five to 15 minutes of flight time, and would draw about 20 to 30 amps at max throttle. So what I've done now is I've outfitted the airframe with a DJI 2312, 2212 or something like that motor that's off of a DJI Phantom 2, and that draws about 7 to 8 amps at max throttle, which in turn obviously provides a much greater efficiency. Originally, I used a 2200 uh, milliamp hour 3 cell, and then I ended up getting a 4 cell 3300 milliamp hour. The reason I eventually changed uh, from the 3 cell to the 4 cell is because with the 4 cell at a lower throttle value, there is a greater increase in efficiency and lower amp draw on a relative scale. Even though technically the motor was drawing more amps while being powered by a 4 cell, just because the 4 cell has 14.8 volts versus 11.1 volts, and because the 4 cell is able to output more power to the motor and therefore generate more thrust, you can fit a larger battery size in milliamp hours on the craft and therefore equate to a larger flight time. During this process, and also my school project, I used an online program called eCalc, which has a really big online motor database that can be used for calculating efficiency and electronic setups in all different types of RC planes. Actually, oh crap, right now, I figured out exactly what my problem was for not getting enough flight time relative to my eCalc calculations. The DJI Phantom 2 motors are 2212 type, while the DJI Phantom 3 motors are 2312 type. What I was doing on the eCalc was I was calculating the efficiency based off of the 2312 motors, and when in reality I was using the 2212 motors, which I just calculated again, and I get a much, much lower efficiency value. However, I do happen to have a 2312 DJI Phantom motor, and I will probably do a follow-up video on that so that um, I can actually get the accurate results that I wanted. So in order to test this setup and gather my data, what I did was I would take the plane out, and for increments of five minutes, I would fly the plane, record the uh, battery percentage at the start of the flight, as you see here, and then after that five minutes, I would record the ending percentage of that flight. For the three cell setup, I got a drop rate in percentage of about three to four percent a minute, and then the four cell setup, I got about three percent a minute. So not a huge increase. However, that was also using the same motor and not using that 2312 motor that I will eventually switch out. The max flight time that I was able to calculate was around 30 minutes or so, a little bit above 30 minutes with the 4 cell and a little bit below 30 minutes with the 3 cell. And with the eCalc program using the 2312, it promised a 60 minute flight time at 50% throttle and therefore cruising speed. With eCalc, what it does is it highlights in bold, as you saw before, the optimal cruising throttle. And the optimal cruising throttle was at about 50% with 60 minutes of total flight time. What you're seeing right now in the background is footage that I got uh, with the three cell battery at a flying field in Nevada. This was a good test environment due to the extremely hot conditions. I think that day it was around, I don't know, 105 or something like that. It was, it was bacon. And um, the motor did get hot, but um, I did still calculate around the same amount of flight time as I would in the cold conditions. Stability-wise, this plane is actually very, very excellent. It flies like it's on rails. And eventually, as you'll see, with the 4-cell, it takes the extra weight and is still able to fly very, very smooth. And um, I think it's a good test platform right now for 
these motors and eventually I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple of them and I'm going to make a twin and maybe wire a couple four cells together to make like a 6600 milliamp hour battery because when you wire two motors together it doesn't cut the uh, flight time in half it actually only reduces it by about uh, maybe a third of, of the original single motor flight time and therefore that's a big big possibility for efficiency increases. minutes 10 seconds What up? Today, we have for you a very long plane. It's gonna fly for a long time. You ready? You can zoom in if you want. So the different thing I have here uh, from my uh, from the previous clip is um, I have a four cell 3,300 milliamp hour battery on it. It's a little bit heavier, but also a little bit more power. And I calculated that um, cruising speed, it should, which is around like 50% throttle, it should be able to fly for 60 minutes. And so right now I'm at cruising speed um, at 50% throttle. I'm gonna climb here. And uh, we're not actually gonna fly for 50 minutes, but I did record the battery starting at 94%. So we're probably going to fly it for about, I don't know, five minutes here, and uh, we'll see how it is when we bring it in. How long do you want me to film for? How long do you want me to film for? Uh, for like two minutes. Is really bad. Okay. Are you going to put music over this? Things looks... Do you have a gyro or is it just mm -mm. stable? It's just that stable. Also, I'm constantly making corrections. Yeah. But, um... Not very, not very big correct. Mm -hmm. I think I might have expos on it for like 30%. So smaller movements mean smaller movements. And then the more I move it, the larger the movement will be. Yeah, it's like a gradient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna get a little, one more pass and then I'll stop. Yeah, one more pass and then we'll uh, cut it off. And I'll fly for, for the five minutes that it has time on my transmitter. And then I'll go record the battery. Oh boy. <laughs> hey, where'd it go? Oh. <laughs> In conclusion, this project still needs a little bit more work, um, but it is overall gone pretty successfully so far. I just need to adjust my calculations and also use an actual timer because, as I said, if you've heard it in the video before, um, my transmitter timer only turns on when it's above half throttle, and there was some parts where I was below half throttle, and I don't think it was calculating quite correctly onto the second, so I might have gotten more, like a longer flight time, than uh, I initially suggested. But I think that's going to wrap up this video for now. Um, there will definitely be another one where I switch out the motor and um, improve other things on the plane. Other than that, enjoy all this bonus footage that I got during the process of filming this, including some RC car stuff, and me filming my friend flying uh, my Dorito plane. Take it easy, boys.
Whoa. Whoa. Ah. 